The number of homeless people in the Bay Area is a well-known and serious problem. Less well-known is homelessness among another population, another species, cats. Holly Chenette's day job is teaching Spanish at East Side College Preparatory School in East Palo Alto, but her avocation is caring for the growing number of feral cats in the community. Consider this, one unspayed female cat can become 88,000 or more cats over a span of five years. As a volunteer for the Homeless Cat Network, Holly has been trapping, spaying, neutering, and fostering hundreds of cats for the last 15 years. How did you get started doing this? Uh, in 2007, my husband called me saying, hey, there's a, a litter of kittens in our back yard of our office. And so I went and looked, and boy, were they cute. They were, the mother was white, and the kittens were little tiny white uh, balls of fluff, mostly white. Um, and I went home and I researched what you do in that case. And then I met up with uh, Nicola of the Homeless Cat Network. So she came over, uh, she came to that office and saw that I had them by then in the bathroom. And uh, it was very easy to see that they were dirty and that because they were, they were white. So it was easy to see the fleas and the dirt. She grabbed each one and took it to a faucet and washed each one. And I, that just seemed so impressive to me that I, um, it's such a simple way to make a big difference in a cat's life. So that's, I was hooked. I uh, stayed with the program. You know, I became a volunteer just like she had been. What are the biggest threats or dangers to these cats that maybe we don't know about? Sicknesses cars, uh, suffering, uh, stress from reproduction, uh, they really don't, they're domestic animals, they really don't need to be on the streets, they suffer there, there's not enough food for them there. The kittens will grow up with uh, upper respiratory infections and if they're not treated, uh, they lead to other problems. They don't belong on the streets, I think we've become accustomed to it in, in some areas. Should people feed the cats? What should they feed them? How should they feed them? Should they turn them in? What do I do when Thank I see Thank you for one? the question because yes, uh, feeding is okay. Uh, we as rescuers love to have healthy populations and in order to have healthy populations they need to find food somewhere. So uh, cat food has the basic nutrition uh, <laughs> and that's great when residents can feed them. Um, they can also look closely and see if maybe the cat has already had its ear tipped. The veterinarian, when they neuter them, will trim the top corner off the ear to notify everyone that it's been neutered. So what the Homeless Cat Network and I think all rescue organizations recommend as the most humane uh, way to deal with this problem is TNR, which is Trap Neuter Release. And so we trap them humanely. Uh, we get them neutered and get their basic vaccinations and flea treatment, and then we release them back where we found them, uh, particularly, of course, if they're feral and adults. Uh, we have humane traps, and so you put food in one end, and, and the cat will love the smell and go in, and then the door will close down on the cat on the other end. Um, doesn't hurt the cat. It does scare it. Uh, then we, we are checking regularly, we come right over, we cover it with a towel and that really calms the animal down. And then we take it off to the vet. If we come across kittens or we come across tame cats, which does happen, then of course we, we send them into the fostering and adoption mm -hmm. uh, route. Tell me what that entails and how long do you keep them and, and what do you have to do? So we're always needing foster people. Um, that entails keeping the animal or multiple animals, uh, a few weeks, more than a few weeks probably, socializing them, um, seeing that their basic needs are met, uh, taking them to appointments, uh, neutering or adoption fairs, which happen uh, often, um, taking nice photos of them, uh, having them put on pet finder so that they can be adopted. You talk about socializing, what does that mean? 
Uh, the more chaos in your home, the better for, for fostering. If you've got kids, if you've got dogs, if you've got noise, that's what we want. Them. We Why? want them to be exposed to that. Okay, so, so they they're used up. to chaos yeah. in general. Uh -huh. yeah. grow up. So now I have two cats and a dog, and uh, the, that first family of white kittens that we were talking about, well, the runt of that litter, uh, I guess you'd call that a foster fail. It ended up staying in, in my home. How hard is it if you keep fostering and giving up and fostering and giving yeah. up? Isn't that hard? It gets easier with every time. And yes, it's, it was hard in the beginning, um, but it does get easier as time goes by. And then I realize, well, I'm making space in my home so that I can go out and find more, uh, you know, and solve more problems out on the street. Uh, Homeless cats keep appearing on the streets. Um, I, I want to do what I can. It's, it's, it's a small, um, small thing, but uh, I think it makes a big difference to the cat. So uh, the time is now. The time is now to uh, help these animals.